What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we are joined by the Marsman crew to review episode six of the Last of Us TV series from HBO. And let me just tell you guys, this was an interesting episode because of the fact that, I mean, there's a lot of things you can go into here, but now we're getting closer to the end of the game, and this is really the part where it gets super interesting because of the fact that a lot of stuff is going on here. And just like we normally do, the first half of the episode is going to be focused on the non-spoiler review where we discuss the biggest things that happen really on our opinions, our impressions of what's going on. Second half of the video is going to focus more on the spoiler discussion where we actually break down the plot and what our general feelings are about it overall and then kind of just end off from there. But but being, I, I honestly thought that this episode was okay, but generally I kind of want to start us off with our impressions. My impressions of this episode, I felt like dialogue has been a constant, like, good thing over the this entire season. I feel like the dialogue that's been written has been very good. It focused a lot about this Joel and Ellie relationship. How are they doing after, obviously, things going on from Kansas City? And I think the writing has really been, uh, you know, obviously, like I said, it's been constant. It's been good. There wasn't a lot of action, so I feel like my impressions of this was all about character development, right? And I think that they did a good job at developing the relationship between Joel and Ellie, the writing between all the characters. I don't want to mention specific people because I don't want to get into spoilers, but all the characters' writings I thought were pretty good. Um, there were some parts that I definitely would be a little like, I was a little like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this one, but we'll get more into that in spoilers section. But I really did like this dial this dialogue between Joel and Ellie. I thought that was probably the master, like the master class of the whole episode. Because if you compare it to the games, it was the same thing. We'll talk more about that in spoiler section, but I thought overall characters, dialogue between the main characters, all pretty solid. There's not a lot of action in this episode. So that's just my first impressions of what I saw from this. Um, but Haki, I want to get your impressions next. What were your feelings about this episode? Yeah, so I, I thought the episode was uh, okay. Um, you know, not a, like you said, not a ton of action. <laughs> Uh, which I know, you know, The Last of Us doesn't always have to have action. You know, there are some uh, spots where, you know, it, it's it, like you said, a lot of character development. So I think um, seeing that character uh, development between Tommy and Joel uh, was also pretty cool for me as well. And just the continuation uh, of, of bonding between Joel uh, and Ellie. So, again, I, I think this was a filler episode. I think we're all in agreement of, of that. So. You know, I'm excited to see what happens next episode because I think things are probably going to get a little crazy. So, yeah, that, if you played the games, you kind of know what's going on next. But, uh, Angela Kill, what's your impressions here? Yeah, I'm just going to start off with I don't like calling this a filler episode because, like, when you talk about filler episode, at least when it comes to like animated shows and stuff like that, filler episodes means that at the end of the episode, the main plot doesn't push forward at all and and it did that but it felt like there was a lot of empty calories kind of like what Haki was kind of um, alluding to um, when he said that so I don't know what I want to call it but I do know it was heavy character development I agree with the assessment that was made heavy character development especially for Joel and I think that's kind of where the main focus of this one was the character development of Joel and and again his dialogue with Ellie and with his brother and the one thing I will knock on this, and we'll get into spoilers, this was the first episode that I really felt that it was rushed towards the end. And I, I thought they've done a solid job of trying to get through a lot of content, cutting out some stuff. We talked about it over previous weeks, but this is the first one where I really felt kind of that rushed feeling towards the end of the episode. And to me, I think it hurt the overall score, but still above average television. Yeah, so now let's get to our ratings officially, and I'll start with mine first. Um, I think this is honestly probably the second worst episode for me personally. I thought that this is better than episode three, but I would give this officially a 6.5. Episode three was a six for me. I'm going to raise that 6.5. The dialogue, because I'll give you my my reasons. The biggest thing that they did here was really focus on the relationship between Joel and Ellie. Right, which was obviously great. And that was the reason why I gave episode three a down score of hitting it a six. With that, it didn't really focus on the two main characters. It really focused on the side character, which in the grand scheme of the story didn't have as much impact as what people wanted. So if they now they focus heavily on Joel and Ellie, which was great. The downside is that there wasn't really a lot of conflict, right? The conflict emerged from 
emotional damage that was left behind from previous things that happened a long time ago which is obviously a big deal but there's not a lot of like you know conflict that's happening at this point in the very beginning there was a little bit but then they just had a very long like just stuff and we'll talk about that obviously in the spoiler section but i think that when you're looking at this it showed good dialogue which has been constant in this this show even episodes that weren't great had good dialogue but I just feel like they didn't have enough for me to to really bring me in like, yeah, this is an intense moment. There's no like it wasn't really an, an intense moment, only only at the end. And like 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 Langella Kill said, it's very just brief. It wasn't as long as I would like it to be. Like timing wise, it was very similar to well, episode three with the intensity, but the difference is episode three had a lot more just filler, not say filler stuff, but just talking and getting dialogue versus this one. And I feel like this one did a better job at developing the characters that you really are associating with the with the actual show and stuff so i thought they and they had some deviations from the games which is not the worst thing as long as they keep the characters constant and they kind of did for the most part um a little bit of changes but we'll talk more about that in spoilers i just think overall 6.5 for me would be the score i think so let's go with angelic hill next what's your rating and why um i have it at 7.8 i have the same score as episode three i thought episode three again and they did a really good job of uh, creating emotion in episode three, but the focus wasn't on the two main characters. And so um, that's where I think it gets the best of its leverage. And this episode, it focuses on the main characters. But I do think, again, I'm not one of those guys that need action all the time. There, there's not going to be action all the time. You know, there's a lot of really great shows that people enjoy that are drama series that don't have a lot of action and they don't get knocked for it. But I do think at times where there's opportunities to have those actions, that they could have done a little bit more of it. And I, this was, again, another one of those moments towards the end of the episodes that we'll talk about in spoilers. And I do think this episode had the chance to reach the mid-80s and upper 80s for me, but I gave it a, a complete one minus score to a 7.8 because of the rush at the end. And we'll talk about the details, but the rushing at the end is what kind of hurt it for me and had a great opportunity um, for a kind of a profound, um, a profound kind of conflict that is in the game there wasn't a lot of deviation from the game but they could have had a bigger moment towards the end that i think um would have done a little bit more for me not the plot or the ending because that all makes sense but just the way they went about it i think could have done a better job 7.8 yeah. 7.8 so hockey what's your rating why yeah so my rating is going to be a 7.5 so it is going to be this uh, you know second worst kind of in, in the same boat as you uh mars man so Again, I didn't play the video game, so I'm kind of just going off of how the episode is just in general uh, and how my feelings are. Frank said, or Langelico said, you know, there's not going to be action all the time. So I know there's not going to be infected all the time, um, but I still want to see some type of conflict or, or a little bit more than, than what I did, whether it be with infected or with raiders or whomever uh, the conflict, you know, should be with. Um, the, the really good thing that I like is the scenery. Um, yeah, the the scenery is just um, on top of the dialogue and 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 the character development. I think the scenery is is was beautiful. You know, I think they're out in Wyoming, right, and and Colorado. So they got to show the you know the uh, the forest and and the and the lakes and the mountains. So I, I thought, and we'll get into you know the town and everything. You don't want to spoil anything, but I thought you know what they did with with the scenery was just very very good. So again, it's not my favorite episode. It, it's still. Like Langella Kill said, it's still well above average uh, TV. So that's what, that's my reason for a 7.5. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm excited for, for the future if they keep going down the path of, uh, you know, what the game did. Yeah, so listen, that's going to be it for the non-spoiler section. Let us know what you guys think about this episode in the comments below. But if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. You can obviously join us on Twitch. We stream three days a week. And that's also located in the description below. As well as all of our socials are located there as well. Follow us on any of those and we'll be happy to have you. We are going to be now jumping to our spoiler discussion where we discuss the major plot points. So if you want to listen up and you know see whether your thoughts are the same as ours, stick around to the spoiler section. So here we go. Spoiler section here, guys. And the key thing that I'm thinking about in this episode mentioned earlier was, yeah, this was not necessarily my favorite episode but my second least favorite of all of them but at the end of the day it still was solid like for the most part i don't think this is bad television i don't think this is you know like something that's unwatchable like some other shows i've seen that were gaming adaptations but the point is is that this is uh 
you know, not a, not a filler, but it's just like a talk it, talking episode, not a lot of conflict for me. So essentially, this all takes place really three months after the entire incident in Kansas City, where basically Ellen jo uh, Joel and Ellie are kind of moving uh, more westward to get to Wyoming because at the end of the day, uh, they're trying to find where Tommy is located. And so in the very beginning, they hold up these two elderly people uh, near the areas to try to go find and say, hey, have you heard where Tommy is? They, didn't, they don't know who he is, but they kind of point him in the right direction. But they're going to talk about like this river of death. Right? They say, don't pass this river of death because every person we see goes there, they die, leave the bodies behind. And so that's where they're going. Um, they're they're going to go to the, the past the river of death and hopefully they get past there. They say the West is extremely dangerous. You don't want to go West because, you know, obviously think about it. You go to California, the population is so massive that that means that's where the fungus is essentially going to have a major stronghold. So you don't want to go West. So that's kind of the point of it. But they eventually get to the river of death. They get, uh, you know, obviously the, the whole point is, is that they, uh, yeah, it, the, the, I like this kind of thing that they build on with this whole Joel is having anxiety portion because he's leaving and you notice that he's having issues whenever it's about trying to, you know, to think about Tommy and what's going on with him or or what can they do? Like he having these inner struggle thoughts about, you know, not being able to save the people, protect the people he cares about. Right. And he's had that issue with Tess. He's had that issue with with others, with his daughter, with Sarah. And now it's Tommy, right? It's like the constantly hear about Tom, this and West is, and, and now see Ellie as well. Now, including with this episode, but the point is, is that he's constantly having these fears that he's unable to protect the people he cares about. And he keeps having these anxiety issues where he's like, he's holding onto his heart. He's having problems. And, you know, you see it in the very beginning. I thought the music that they kind of tied into this part was pretty good. This is a classic theme from the last of us. Um, so once I heard it, I was like, yeah, that's, that's a good that's a good song to put in here because they haven't really been using the music as much as I would like to, um, which is unfortunate. But they they did a good job here with that. Now they finally get to the river. You know they have a they have a campsite. Everything's all good. They kind of talk about well, hey, what would you want to do if this if this my blood cures everyone? Right. That was kind of the conversation they have, and I thought it was a pretty good one because it's kind of like a kind of what can we have a normal life? You think you know? And they kind of talk about their dream lives that they would be and stuff and. Um, you know, and, and Ellie tells Joel, he, she tried to save Sam and it didn't, you know, it didn't work. And he's like, and he said kind of exactly what a lot of people were thinking. Like, it's not that simple, right? As much as it, it, we wished it was that simple, it's, it's going to be something more. Maybe they know what to do. And we'll, we'll hear about that. If you know, if you've ever played the game, you know exactly what it's going to be. But the point is though, is that, uh, essentially Joel is showing that he's kind of like deteriorating health wise because of this anxiety, as well as. Everything he's got on in his life. He's 50, what, six years old? 50, yeah, uh, the, 56 the years he's old. He's in the show, he's 56. They, that was like the, one of the bigger changes they did in the games is that he was, he's like 10 years younger in the, in the no, game. 52. He was 52. I thought he was, I thought he was in his 40s, but I mean, no, it, uh, be, uh, 52. It was a four, uh, four year difference. He, he, he essentially didn't have the same level of health deterioration as he does in the, in the show as he did in the game. Like in the game, he, yeah, he's an older guy, but it wasn't to the level of, um, you know, that he's having some major problems. Um, but basically the key thing is that, uh, once, once they get to the, uh, get to the river and it was really interesting about this point is that they get stopped by a group of raiders and they have a dog that can smell out whether you're infected or not, which is obviously a big deal because Joel gets saved. Um, but then he's, he's scared what's going to happen to Ellie, right? Cause that was the thing they can read that you are infected, right? And she is infected, but she's not, she's immune, right? So that's the point. So the dog gets to her and she's fine, right? The dog sniffs her, he's all happy, whatever. They get entered into the town and, you know, Tommy's wife kind of recognizes Joel a little bit because he's like, because he looks a little bit similar. And he, she asks, who who are you? What's your name? She says his name. And they bring her to Jackson, which is this community that they created in Wyoming. And uh, basically, you know, they, that's where you see Tommy and Joel are reunited. It's a good scene. It's, you know, just like the game, uh, basically. Now, the only difference is in the game, they get to the gates um, and essentially that's where you kind of like see a little bit of like interaction between everybody. Um, but once you get to Jackson, you start seeing like, wow, this place is like perfect. Like it's got everything working, power, heats, food, movie theaters even. And, and everyone's kind of like, it's a perfect, kind perfect community commune and everything. And, um, but it's kind of a, a key thing that they kind of mentioned here is that Tommy was off the grid. Basically once he left. The Fireflies, he no longer was using the, the radio kind of messaging. And that was Joel's way of knowing, like, is, is he okay? Is is everything all right? And now he basically was off the grid. 
Joel kind of like was extremely upset about this, especially since he finds out that, you know, Tommy's having a kid, that Tommy's abiding by Marie's rules. And, and no, he was really angry about it because he's like, you know, I, I suffered and I was worried that, you know, something happened to you this whole time. And, and now you're, you're having this brand new life. It's like, you're, you're okay. Thriving. You're thriving. You're moved on. Right. And, and, and Joel is out here suffering. Right. And he's kind of just like, angry about the whole thing and it kind of causes a rift between the two of them he feels betrayed and i think that um I and it's, jealous. he was jealous that he's yeah. that his his brother who was always getting into trouble all the time that he always had to protect he's living a good life while joel is having you know that um you know he's he's, he's struggling right and and then yeah. he leaves and he sees a woman that has like similar hair to with sarah and he starts having like memories of her and he starts having anxiety again and the music hits the same music that you heard before and it's a good it's a great tune to post up because you know that's the last of esteem and if people play the game you recognize that and that's like a that's a good song to add there and it just shows that he's struggling like he's joel's having a lot of issues with un, being unable to protect everyone because in that in that discussion between him and tommy he even asked how oh, how's tess doing and he's like oh she's fine like because he doesn't want to let tommy know that there's a lot of issues that he's going through right now and like he's he's because he's his older brother he doesn't want to tell him that his his life is really having some struggles and essentially this at the same time maria is uh is having discussions with ellie and it, this is a very interesting alter, uh, discussion where maria is basically telling ellie you know is is he making you do things that you don't want to like killing people and joel's like an evil guy and he was changing tommy and that's why tommy left and all these like other subverting kind of you know discussions and it was messed up because you're thinking about like joel like you know Joel even says to Tommy, like, you know, listen, we had to do things to survive. It wasn't because I'm just an evil person. It's like we had to do these things to just get away from all this stuff. And, you know, Tommy doesn't blame him for that. But it kind of shows that, you know, Maria doesn't trust Joel. Maria is, is basically kind of trying to get possibly get Ellie to, like, maybe not believe in him or, or really follow what he says and, and all that. And it was kind of like a really messed up thing. And eventually... You know, Joel is struggling so bad and Tommy goes to apologize after everything and Joel tells him the whole story about everything that happens and about Ellie. And he's like, listen, I I only trust you of everybody on earth, right? So it's like, I can tell you this thing and you got to go save her because he can't anymore. Like he told him like, I I would have been able to destroy that kid, right? In in Kansas City, but he was bro He's not the same guy anymore. And he's like, Tommy, you got to bring him because I can't. And they, they, they think that the Fireflies will be at the university in Eastern Colorado. So that's where he says, listen, you got to bring her for me and I'm going to have to leave her here. I'm going to have to go our separate ways. And uh, eventually, you know, Ellie hears about you now she eavesdrop on the conversation, which I don't remember the part where she, I mean, I could have maybe just like looked away for a second, but she hears the conversation that they're having. Um, um, they don't, they don't show her like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just, they, show her leave, the they show her leave the movie theater. She's, yeah. And he's walking follow, through the town. And follow Tommy, yeah, and walking into town. So yeah, I'm so assuming that she spotted I'm, him. Yeah, I'm sure she spotted him or whatever. But I was just like, when she said, "Oh, I heard," it, I was like, "Did I like for, miss something here?" Like I don't, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I remember seeing that. But so she hears the conversation, and uh, and this is this is probably the best part of the episode. This is actually directly from the game. I thought they kind of mirrored the game very closely in this part, which I thought was great to do that because this is a big part of the game too. Where they're having obviously this this conversation and it starts Ellie's like, Hey, I know you're trying to leave me here and you know, I'm not I'm not your daughter, I'm not Sarah. And, and you know, he's already like, Don't even speak another word about Sarah. Like, and she's like, you know, I he's like, I'm not I feel I'm sorry for what happened to your daughter. And and she's also like, you know, uh, I I've lost people too, and he just you have no idea what loss is, right? Yeah, that's the line in the game. You have no idea what loss is, right? And that was, it's a big, because it's, you know, it's a big thing because both of them have felt what loss yeah. is, right? That's yeah. the point is that Joel believes that what he's dealing with is like, you, there's no one that can compare to what happened to him. And and Ellie has a lot of that same yeah. feeling, right? And it's just, she's not, she she doesn't show it on her, she doesn't wear on her sleeve like Joel does. Like, well, Joel is very, you know he's he's controlled he's he's yeah. contained right and and ellie is very out there right and she she's been through a lot of things too but she just handles it differently than joel does and you know ellie ellie straight up says you know I, i'm like she, she's everyone that she's cared about is gone right everyone that she loves is gone and 
or they left her. They left her or they died or whatever it may be. And she's like, and now the only person that, you know, that I care about left is going to leave me. And he's like, if you think that that's going to only help me, then you're wrong because it's going to scare me even more if you're not there. And, you know, this is where it gets brutal because then Joel's just like, you know what? Like, you're right. You are not my daughter. Like, and I sure as hell ain't your dad. And I was just like, oh my God. I rem- it's exactly the line from the game. It's brutal, right? It's just a, and you know, like, and you know, he's like, you're going to be staying, you're going to go with Tommy. I'm, we're going to say, say our separate ways. And that was it. And obviously next morning, Joel gives her a choice to stay with, go with Tommy, you go with him. And instantly he's like, all right, let's go. Like, it was just like, it was kind of like one of those things where you're like, it was kind of fast. You're like, you know, it was just like instant, like, all right, well, they were good now. And, and then they start going on the trip and they, essentially they get to the university. They find out possibly that they are located in Salt Lake City. And at that point, you see Raiders get to the university. And this is where like the 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 instant of how fast this last altercation gets is outrageous a little bit where all right, the Raiders are here. We got to go. They get outside. They get attacked by a Raider swings his bat against the, the, the tree. It breaks. Joel grabs him basically chokes is choking him out cracks his neck and i don't know how it was possible but the apparently the raider stabbed him with the end of the well, of the bat that was left behind right while on the time of him grabbing him and now joel's injured right now this is the difference between what happened in the game whatever but in the game it was outrageous too where he yeah. fell and he landed through <laughs> a second story and a pipe went through, 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 through his stomach, his stomach completely <laughs> he probably like, oh. would have died if you know, that he, really and he, <laughs> ellie got him out and like i'm gonna yeah. get out of here like <laughs> If he that happened in real life, like he would yeah, be, dead. be dead. Like <laughs> way lost so much blood would have been lost by that yeah. point. Um, but you know, he gets stabbed. Ellie gets them out of there, but he Joel collapses. The yeah. only difference in the game at this point is that, you know, they get to a cave kind of like an area like where they 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 know like they're safe and then he collapses. I did see a barn. I did see a barn there. That, like that's when the they thing, were like, walking. I was in, thinking maybe that, yeah. In the game, that's kind of what happens. They land yeah, in the yeah. barn and he passes yeah. out and then Ellie yeah. Basically, um, so I think I forgot, I forgot like, she sewed him not, or let's she not go too far though. Yeah, no, let's I, not, yeah, let's... I, I'm just saying, like I forgot yeah. what ha- like how it happened, but essentially yeah, yeah. that's how the episode ends, and yeah. he passes out as they escape, and and then and and, and that's it. And yeah. the big thing is, is that like yeah, you know, the last part was good because it showed some intensity, but the main issue I had with the episode was the fact that like I give it a six six and a half because of the fact that yeah, you know. It was good to see this dialogue, and one of the best scenes of the entire show was the line, was the dialogue between Joel and Ellie. Right, that that is a best one of the best scenes of the game, one of the best scenes of the show. Right, don't get me wrong, loved it. Downside is is that there wasn't a lot of conflict. Right, there's nothing that really was like the stakes are hot. Right, that there's nothing there. Right, we just got came off from a monster episode where there's a lot of stuff going on, considered to be one of the probably. I ranked it either the best or the second best episode of the entire show because of how intense it can get. And there's a lot of conflict there, right? A lot of good emotion, a lot of good dialogue. And then you go to this episode where there's good dialogue between everybody, which it's been constant throughout the show, but not a lot of conflict, right? And I think hockey said this in the non-spoiler section and I get it. It's a video game. You're not going to get battles and people fight and kill each other all the time. But you know, they had said, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that go try to go West and uh, you know, there's a lot of dead bodies over there. You don't want to go over there. There's never an indication of once that there was any zombie, zombie, any infected or any people going that way. Because you would think, like, you know, maybe give the idea that there's raiders trying to get in con- a decent amount of time in Jackson and they, they stop them, right? Whatever, right? But the point is, is that there's not a lot of conflict here, right? Yeah, this is better than episode three for me, right? Because you focus a lot on the development between Joel and Ellie, right? Which is the main characters of the show versus side characters like bill and frank that's the reason why i got it above it right and you know i think six and a half is is still solid it's better than average television and it's a good it's it's a it's a solid episode i just think that they didn't really give me enough conflict for me to be like yes like it was only the last five minutes of the entire episode did you feel like intensity right and that's the downside i think the pacing was off especially at the end everything else was okay Dialogue was good, music was cool, but not enough conflict, right? That's my that's my take. So, uh, let's go with Angelic Kill first. What do you feel about these these events that happened in this episode? Well, again, I think it's top notch 
acting and dialogue writing uh, and the scenery. I think those are top notch elite performances. It would be a shock to me. I don't know what you guys think that either Pablo Pascal or Bella Ramsey, either one of them win an award for this show. I do think at least both of them are going to be nominated. And I think one of them is going to take home some sort of trophy because I think they've been phenomenal. I really do. I think they've done the characters as well as you could do characters from a video game. Um, and I, there isn't a character that I've disliked, maybe outside of Kathleen, but there hasn't been really a character that I've disliked in this show. But I'm, I'm again, I just mentioned it in the pre-spoiler. I'm not big on it needs to be action similar to, to the video game because the video game had a lot of action and it's hard to do that in a TV show when they call it a drama and not an action series, right? So it's supposed to be a drama. You know the violence was going to be down, but I didn't care if there was violence at the dam. I didn't care if there was violence at Jackson but there was a perfect opportunity at the university, a perfect opportunity to extend some of that violence with the Raiders there a little bit more. Now, again, I think the change they made on how Joel got injured makes more sense in the video game. Like we talked about, he fell from a second floor and had a pipe go through his stomach. It would have killed him in real life. Um, but, you know, they made it where he swung the bat, broke off it. I'm assuming he got stabbed when he lunged at him from the front. I don't think he got it from behind and stabbed him. I think he got him from the front in the beginning. The adrenaline's going, he turned him around, and that's when you know, he cracked his neck. That's what I'm assuming. But, to me, we heard a lot about the Death River. Okay, the Jackson people put the bodies out there. We heard a lot about, even from Tommy, that it's dangerous from here to, you know, to, to the university. And and this is, comes to one of those moments where show me, don't tell. Right. Show me how dangerous it is when you got to the university, realized fireflies weren't there, have an extended fight with two or three of those raiders. And that's when Joel gets injured. Right. Instead of just that one wait, all four of them walked, one of them stayed behind. Whatever. Like that that's not the biggest deal to me, but it was so quick, so sudden. And that was the only it had a perfect opportunity to extend it a little bit at the university. That's the one where it hurts for me. But really solid acting and really solid dialogue saves this episode and it's above average television. Yeah. So Haki, what do you think, man? What are your feelings about this overall episode? Yeah, so I think one of my favorite parts was um, uh, the town Jackson. You know, seeing how if everyone comes together, even in the worst of times, you can, you know, you're still humans. Yeah. As long as you're not infected, you're still humans, right? So you can make a community, you know, uh, get the wall up, get, get boards, make sure it's safe and everything. You can have a community. Um, I think that town jackson if it was as in the video game i mean it was it was really it, cool it, 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 it is it was, yeah it yeah. was very well done um and and i talked about scenery before how when they were walking past joel and ellie had like a little conversation about um dam uh, about the dam and like yeah. hydroelectricity yeah, yeah, right yeah. and you know they kind of pointed to that that's how they have lights and, and electricity in the town which is cool um and again like you had both said that the dialogue was very good. I think the dialogue between Joel and Tommy in that workshop was super important when Joel was pretty much saying that he feels like he's going to fail Ellie, mm -hmm. you know, because he's been failing in his sleep. He's been having dreams and he's been failing in his sleep. And, you know, you can see how emotional he got and kind of how yeah. broken he's becoming um, as a, as a person dealing with all this stuff. Uh, um, so, and yeah, when, when he's at the horse, you know, barn and, and Ellie comes by and it's just like quick, like he's like, I right, slept on it and we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. She was like, I'm going to go with you. And like, I, I laughed like really hard. I was like, yo, that's mad funny. You know, like Ellie's like such a savage. Like I, I really like the actress that plays her. And, and obviously uh, Pedro Pascal is, is doing fantastic as well. Um, but I, I'm in agreement with both of you about the university. And, you know, there just wasn't, there, I, 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 there wasn't, there almost wasn't conflict at all, other than that, like last minute. Like they could have had conflict as soon as they walked in. I know there doesn't have to be an infected, you know, in every single show and every single scene. But show me like a dead, show me some dead infected. Like show me some infected that maybe the fireflies had, you know, fought off. Or you know, give, give me a reason why the fireflies left. Maybe they will give you that reason in, in, in another episode. But give me some, give me something that tells me. You know that that it's really that dangerous you know as everyone was saying just like you two said so you know he gets stabbed it kind of was a weird scene um they get away and he falls off the horse and and 
to me, I had texted you guys like, yo, what's going on? Because I thought, I thought he died right there, you know? Like, obviously, you know, he, you know, I'm not going to say anything past that. But, you know, it, it seemed like he died, you know? But, um, again. Which is on purpose. Was, the show did that on purpose yeah, for the non-game. Yeah, it, 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 it ends on the cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. For the people that have no idea, right? Yeah. I have a small idea because I've talked to you guys before. But, um, you know, in general, the whole episode, it was it was a good episode. It wasn't great. Um, they're, they, they're killing it with dialogue. They're killing it with yeah. scenery. They're killing it with music. The writing's fantastic. Um, I didn't have and I, that conversation between Joel and Ellie in the room. Yes, it was heartbreak, but it was not like kill your brother heartbreak, you know? Like, no, it wasn't, no. That's yeah, not, it wasn't, it wasn't to that level. Like, you know, and, but it's and a, I know if that, you played the um, game, it's like a great, like, you know, like, oh man, that's, that's the moment. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. You know, that's tough. That's yeah, verbally yeah. tough, you know? So, and I know the heartbreak is coming and I was telling, uh, Langelico and I was talking to my boy D-Rob about like, my boy was saying like, at some point after the game, at some point during the game, he started to not care about people. And that's what I had told Langelico. Cause like, everyone's going to die. Like, this was the most upbeat episode and it wasn't yeah, that upbeat. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I'm, gonna, just, it's... I'm, I'm following my boy. Like everyone's going <laughs> to die. So like, you know what? I don't care. Let's just say let's let's just say it's gonna get worse. Um, (laughs) Let's just say it's gonna it's gonna get worse. This is probably the most upbeat you're gonna get. I was like, wow, this is way more upbeat than uh, than it's gonna get. And uh, I guess it's the calm before the storm is probably the best way to say it. But yeah, so first off, I I really did enjoy the episode. Definitely wish they had a little more conflict for me, but overall, still still good television, right? I'm actually in development of doing a video discussing how Last of Us is actually doing game adaptions right and why are they doing it so well and comparing it to some other garbage ones out there. Um, don't want to give up every too much things here, but definitely make sure you guys tune into that. But let us know what you guys think about the episode overall. Put that in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Join us on Twitch where we stream three days a week and you can find that in the description below as well as our socials located there as well. But this is going to be Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys.